I met Thomas when I was 16 in Algorta, my hometown. And he was shooting photos for Transworld at that time. I think I shot some of his first photos that were in skateboard magazines, and he didn't really speak very good English then, and I didn't speak very good Spanish, so we didn't really communicate, but I could just tell that he was a really cool guy. And I kind of watched his career over the years from afar. Maybe we have like two emails in like 16 years. He contacted me and he's like, I've been doing this, all these truth movies and uh, I'm thinking about doing a skate movie and uh, I really would like you to get involved. But then he decided maybe it was not the right timing for him because he's busy with all his exhibitions and art shows and this and that. So. Things just seem to have synergies or they don't. And the thing that I was trying to do before just wasn't naturally kind of getting off the ground like I wanted it to. Uh, I went to his house and we hang out for like three days. It's funny because it's like you, you're meeting someone that you know, but you don't really know. He was like, you know, should we make a film? So it's, he was, he came to me and like, hey, why don't we focus on you and we make it smaller and simple? We were just talking about different options and then he came with the idea of like play with the dreams and reality and we were like straight away was like oh that's cool. Okay. This is how Thomas always worked. He always films in 60 millimeters. It's just a format that I really like. Uh, I just think it has a visceral quality that kind of like expresses the mode and the feeling of the places and uh... we decided to uh, film the whole movie in Spain because this is where I live and I know my country pretty good. We've been looking for uh, specific locations. This video project which Thomas and Fred like to call uh, film is uh, really amazing because we get to go to all these awesome places. Yeah we're trying to find like cool spots, not like just yes, stairs or wells, you know, like some, something more dynamic and plus it's more my kind of skateboarding too. There's this public pool that got like a, a half pipe and a quarter pipe built in it by this guy's dad. It's kind of like a secret spot, you have to know the guy. It's just really beautiful, it kind of looks like a painting and the second we got there I was like wow this place is really cool and it has a lot of age in the, in the ground. and. But it's been there forever and it's really fucked. It's full of cracks and the, the train is super bumpy and there's no coping. It's like any trick is hard to get there. I like that we go to different kind of places, like going and searching for things. We go to this part of the country just for one specific ride through the woods on sand. And then we go to this part of the country to skate a full pipe and then we go to another part of the country to try to get a silhouette shot. It is hard to work in 16 millimeter. You can't just let it run forever. Every roll is like, I think it's like three minutes. There's not many tries in one roll. It's sometimes like, oh, how many, how many tries left in this roll? Uno, on this roll, uno. You know, like makes you really want to do it because you don't want to, okay, and now I sit down and I wait for them to like put a new roll. It's a, different, it's a different process of working. Sometimes it's like, you know how it is, like, okay, it's now, it's coming, it's like, I do it. And it's like, no, 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 I gotta change the roll. Wait, it's two minutes, no! No! Oh. I have to change. No, please! I have to. That's the worst part of this thing. I know. It is now. I know. I'm doing my best, I'm doing as fast as possible. It brings a little bit of pressure because you don't really have many tries. Yeah, filming lines is like, you gotta choose the tricks that uh, you know that you can do pretty quick. It's not that it's like, okay, let's see, three days here, filming a line. No, that's not happening. The other thing is that you cannot see while you're filming. So, oh, let's check it out. No, you wait. <laughs> Most of the time I had to do the things twice or three times to make sure that one, there's like more options for Thomas to select. It's kind of a big ask. They need to really be on task to, to get the footage and maybe skate more than they're normally used to on trips. It's not like, oh, I don't feel like a skating today. I'm not chill. No, 
uh, this is not happening here. You skate every day on your 100%. And you better do your tricks quick. Well, I mean, I think it's a unique, it's a unique film in the fact that it's two skateboarders. At first, I wanted to be sleeping with him, but he said, no, 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 he's gonna sleep with a girl. So the only way for me to be part of it is to jump in his dream. It was pretty easy for me. Matters came to my mind straight away. Matters is a crazy man from Latvia. I met him in Barcelona like uh, maybe five years ago and I've been a big fan of his skating. He has kind of like some of that classic like tall guy, cool looking style, maybe like Ed Templeton or something. Jason Lee and like a really funny, confused early 20 year old. And really easy to hang out. I remember like when we were on the first trip, and the first three or four hours, Thomas came to me and was like, Javi, you were right. Madas is the guy. Super fun to shoot with Matters, and he just does crazy stuff and sees obstacles and situations in, in a really refreshing way. And he really has no uh, limits to like what he'll do, like which to me I love. Like he's not like worried that like he's doing something and he might think someone thinks it's corny or whatever, which is refreshing because you see a lot of people that are like paralyzed by coolness. Even his body language, when he's not skating, you know, it's just like the way that he talks and moves and everything, it's just like, it's weird, but it's cool. And the energy that he has. Yeah, I don't know, being on trip with guys that are 30 years older than me, and they just can't keep up with me, you know? They're really slow. So I just have to act three times slower than usually. But then again, it's really good to be on tour with older guys. There's a lot of things to learn, isn't it? I learn how to have manners at the dinner table, how to shoot photos with cameras. And one thing is he can't take a slams too. I like that. Basically, you know, professional skateboarders are stuntmen. So part of being a stuntman, or if your job is being a stuntman, is you're probably gonna eat shit pretty good pretty often. I broke my thumb, doesn't really work anymore. And I twist my ankle really bad, and it took me forever to get it back. And Matters is like the captain of eating shit. If you want to succeed, you have to fall. Can you promise to not use this footage, Fred? <laughs> it's pretty crazy, like, how much he slams and how hard. And it's just like, that's just another day. This could be the part of the dream where I die. Doesn't complain too much about it and usually eventually makes whatever he's trying. He's 23. He can be for like two weeks skating every day, completely destroyed, and it's like waking up, amazing energy, smiling, just making jokes, and yeah, and then jumping again. It's been hard though because I had toe problems, heel problems, mental problems, and it was like a two weeks trip, and the whole trip he was having an infection in his toe, and he did the biggest street trolley I've ever seen in my life. Gnarly. Every time I skate, I try to challenge myself and try new tricks. Like, for example, the kickflip firecracker was a totally new thing for me. It's just good, and this is what Thomas always asks me as well. I've done Oli firecracker before, but since I Oli firecracker, I thought I could just add a kickflip and do the same, and it actually turned out all right, and I could actually do a line. Whoa! Bravo, bravo! The two days that we were filming in my house in Barcelona. Nothing crazy, but it's just weird. I've been scared my whole life. And suddenly you have to get in bed with your really good friend, naked, in front of all these lights and cameras and people around. And it was funny because I, I took a photo of like the making of or whatever, and I put it on Facebook, and it's like straight away we're like, 
whoa, porno movie, like, what, what's going on? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Yes. In Sevilla, we've been getting some uh, sleeping footage, different one from the one in Barcelona. Thomas' idea is always coming with some cool ideas. Hey, Javi, can you fucking go in the... <laughs> Uh, one important thing when filming for movies and films like this is that you should never leave the things you want to film for the last day. This underwater sequence uh, where Javi's swimming and kind of towing his skateboard behind him. We were trying to like figure out where we were going to shoot this thing and we got there on the day and it was like flat, glassy and beautiful. And the first day was good, but we were a little bit late and Thomas was saying, it's like, oh, I need the sun right on, on top. So, oh, okay, we'll do it tomorrow. But then the next few days, it was just like insane. It was basically after a storm in uh, Mallorca. We just have a really bad luck. We try anyway because it was the last chance. <laughs> and I almost died. Just trying to get in the water. I'm gonna jump in. I'm doing it, I'm doing it. No, not doing it, not doing it. And then finally a big wave comes and boom. Disappear. <laughs> you okay, Javi? Fuck. I can swim, but it was just like, I was wearing all my clothes, shoes. And he would just go and swim like a half a kilometer out in the, in the sea and. I mean, Thomas has been filming surfing forever. He knows what he's doing, but. Uh, I was trying to follow him. So at one point I was like, Thomas, like, let's go back, let's go back. And he's like, no, no. I was like, okay, I go back and you do whatever. <laughs> it was a sketchy, man, but uh, nothing happened. When Javi was uh, risking his life over there, I would just lay in a safe place and get the light showers that come from the waves and just enjoy. The uniform? You want to see the fucking uniform? The fucking uniform. So the starting was bad already. <laughs> it was one close to death experience and he told me about the other one where he went to Thomas's. And then that was in Santa Cruz in November. This time, this is perfect, no waves, but the water is freezing. We swim for like 15, 20 minutes. I'm getting cold already before we start filming. So then we start filming and you know it is, oh, can you do? Do this, like, yeah, do it. I said, oh, can you do it again? Oh, let's try to film it from here. So it's like half an hour, 45 minutes, one hour, and I'm like, hey, it's getting cold, man. It's getting really cold. It's getting fucking cold. <laughs> and suddenly, I was just like, I go frozen. Thomas was talking to me, and I was just looking at him, and I was like, I couldn't talk. And then Thomas realized that something was not going good. It's like, Javi, you have to get out here. It turned, turned out cool, but it was a little bit scary there for a second. And Thomas was like, I think we're going to have to do it again tomorrow. And I think I didn't even say anything. I just looked at him and sure. <laughs> Luckily, Happy is uh, very safe right now and alive, and we all love him. Every time I say a video, Thomas goes and interrupts me and goes like, no. This is a film. <laughs> this is not another internet video.